We're here at our European Identity and Cloud Conference 2021 in Munich with our hybrid event live on stage, so to speak. And I'm here with David from Saxeta. Welcome, David. Thank you, Martin. Pleasure to be here. Yep. Yeah. So, David, tell me a little bit about what Saxeta is doing. I think you're probably a lot of people don't know exactly what Saxeta is doing. So what is your business? Sure. Uh, so we effectively have built a solution that is uh, an identity authority. Uh, primarily, we work in the third-party identity risk space. So what that means is we provide the data, the context, manage the relationships, uh, and do the risk analysis of the individuals at your organization that you give access to. Uh, primarily, uh, not employees, but that also extends to other types of third parties like bots and RPAs. All of those things have identities like people. Uh, and they're often granted access. When I look at identity management, we had, for many years, it was mainly workforce identity management. Yes. Then we had, on the other hand, um, consumer identity management or customer identity management appearing. And there's a gap in the middle, so to speak. So you have workforce, you have consumers, and then there are the partners. And you're concentrating on this sort of part in the middle. Exactly. So... Uh, if, if we look at how consumer identity started, they tried to apply processes, tools, and the like that they applied to workforce to, you know, customers and consumers. And of course, that didn't work because it's a different type of identity with different yeah. needs and different processes. And, and I'd even dare to say that the partners are the most complex ones because you have so many of these. So if you, if you take a contractor right. who is in for three years, that's a totally different type of partners than someone who comes in for, for just a few days or so. Uh, absolutely. So that's um, that's one of the challenges with working with uh, partners and managing partner identity is the difference the differences between population types. So not every population type within an organization has the same requirements from a life cycle pre uh, yeah. perspective. They certainly don't pose the same risk to the organization. So you might uh, in certain industries, you know, have IT contractors. Uh, but if you're in healthcare, you're going to have affiliated uh, healthcare workers. If you're in insurance, you have agents. If you are a car manufacturer, you have dealers. All of those are third parties that you grant access to yeah. uh, in your environment. And quite often that access is similar to employees. Yeah. And, and you have everything in there. To, yeah. I think if you take agents and insurance companies, it can be pretty much what they can do. Right. And, and the interesting thing I, I also believe is there's everything in there. Um, self-managed registration and an approval from an internal there is uh, managed registration for, uh, by internals for Absolutely. their partners there's everything in yes so there's a collaboration that happens and whether you have you know our solution which manages that entire process in a collaborative nature or not your business is collaborating with outside organizations mm -hmm. to effectively get those people access and and without uh, a a well-defined process in a centralized system, you're asking the business to kind of wing it. And the result is access, which is often over-provisioned, not timely, uh, no timely deprovisioning. So that's the that's the outcome. Or, of or that. even worse, it ends up with saying, okay, come on, let's do a, use a shared account for oh, all these yeah. externals. And, and we, we interesting to see this sometimes even in, in high security and high risk areas. So so take the physical security on a, on a factory. Yep. And, and we still see that the people who are, are securing that come in with shared accounts to the IT systems. Yeah, it's because of operational efficiency, right? They're trying to be efficient. They're sharing accounts. They're adding risk to the organi organization. The reason they have to do that is because there's not a tool in place to let them self-serve. And that right? is what you deliver. And that is what we deliver. Collaborative and, 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 solution, yep. And, and so, so, okay, then I have my workforce identity, yep. my consumer identity, and the partner identity. Yes. So, so how do you integrate um, with that? Because at the end, it's still about access to the same set of systems. Sure. So we're not we're not trying to actually provision access, right? That's not our specialty. Mm -hmm. We partner with all of the biggest players uh, in IGA, you know, most of which are here at, at EIC. So uh, they're doing the actual provisioning. We are providing the context about the who, about the relationship that that person mm -hmm. has with the organization, the vendor for whom they work, the sponsor within the organization, and uh, any other context that we can gather to make good decisions about access, right? What access is this person eligible for? And not only what, what are they eligible for, but are they eligible right now? And that is a question that needs to constantly be answered. Yeah. And specifically also the deep provisioning. So Absolutely. I remember I still have an RSA secure ID 
uh, token <laughs> around for, probably from an engagement 10 years ago. I have a draw, a drawer full of them. <laughs> you have a drawer full of them, yes. yes. And I, I always yeah. try to give them back, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. Right. And, and yes, I, I think these are, these are challenges we see in real life. And, and, and we are at risk because the partners, this is so volatile and still so powerful in what they frequently right. can do. I also, in, in an earlier discussion we had uh, here, I brought up this uh, take the summer break in a in a factory when when all the externals come in and, and change the software of the machines and so on. High risk work at the yep. end, and we need to protect it well. And this is what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So the the deprovisioning that happens for partners, you're asking the line of business to be proactive in their approach to terminate and deprovision uh, users. Well, that doesn't work because the line no. of business is not going you, you to always take that action. You need to have well-defined processes which help the business in doing that and remind them and ensure that right. these things happen. Otherwise, you always will end up over-provisioned and at risk. So, David, thank you very much for giving us some insight into yeah. what Sexeta is doing. Thank you. Thank you very Appreciate much it. to everyone here for listening in to this talk. And... Hope to see you in at EIC 2022 in Berlin next year, May. Thank you.